stinging. Leave already. Leave already. Closing the door of the shop while carrying a bag in one of these hands, Danzel turned around to give the shop the last look. TCH, such an annoying bird. Cursing the damn overdramatic crow, he took a glance inside the bag. At least I bought something rather neat to pass some time. Daniel didn't only buy the sun timer from the old owner, but decided to get some other things that the old owner recommend. Though most recommendations that he made were awkward for me to use, such as various potions. Some gave you rich nutrients that helped with the overuse of healing magic, or some that increased your strength for a limited time. They were many more with the stamina potion being the most expensive one. But I simply shook in every potion that the old owner showed me. Danzel wasn't sure why but his rejection seemed to offend the owner, which turned to watch the owner present his collection of potions to me with excess enthusiasm. However, I could only have a wry grin on my face. It wasn't that I was not interested in potions' effects themselves, but the reason I rejected to buy any potions was for one reason alone. I was a freaking undead. With my pure and shiny bones alone, drinking the potions was impossible. It will after all just go past my mouth and fall directly to my ribs bag inside my armor. That would be another kind of a mess. Nonetheless, do things coated two gold coins each. I might have the money to buy this entire stock, but I was nowhere ready to start and thrown money to the ground. Though that didn't stop me from wasting my money where else. Inside the bag were four different items that had coated me a whole of 8p gold coins with one of them being Sun Timer, the three were the following. Blank Book. Knowledge for every caster. Mana Pen. The two items were self-explanatory. The book of every caster that was recommended by the owner had various information of magic, such as the law, the types, and arts of magic. It coded my total of 35 gold coins and the blank book 10 gold coins. Danzel's first thought was that this old man was trying to scam some coins out of this wallet. But he sold me those books at the market price, at least here in the Barum Kingdom. Since the methods of creating paper haven't been developed much here, the books target more of a high-end buyer such as nobles and great mages. As for the mana pen, it was overall handy to have. With the use of some mana of yours, the pan could create just the amount of a substance similar to ink. The pen itself was sturdy with a blue gem in this tip, with the low mana cost it had I decided to buy it. Though 20 gold coins were extremely expensive for what it was. The gold lies in the hideout took enough space for me to care of now. Now it will be easier to keep track of notes. He said with a grin on this face. Keeping everything in check in my mind was already a pain in the asterisk S, but hopefully, this book will help me with that. Closing the bag, he turned around walking in the direction of the Oru Firesmith was. It has been five hours already, Garak should have delivered the weapons by now. After a thirty-minute walk, he could already see the sign of Garak's place. Why is that residential hair here again? Looking at Sarah's coming out of the shop and leaving with a group of the four adventures that I had seen this morning. So they were a party of five. Cancel said as he saw the group of five leave together. He sure likes to pester this old dwarf. Moving inside the workshop, I saw Garak standing there with an annoyed expression on his face. Garak, I am back. Didn't I tell you to leave already, Dash? Oh, it's you. Seeing Garak lowering this hammer that he was ready to throw at me, I couldn't help but have an evil grin on my face. He must be pissed. Daniel thought to himself, How did it went Garak? Was there a problem with those guys? Sigh, there is nothing to worry about. They followed the contract. Garak showed a small smile on this bearded face. If someone else were to watch him smile, they would have thought that he was relieved that everything went well but I knew better. This wasn't that kind of smiled V. It was the one that he would always make when he would be scamming a newbie adventure and sell this overpriced crap on this floor. He probably got the item he wanted. Though I didn't know the worth of the item he got, 
It sure must be expensive for him to grin so viciously. Good. Does that mean they got more stuff for me? Showing me an even more vicious grin, Garak tossed the ring of spatial storage, which I watched. Yeah, and more than before. Huh? What do you mean more? Danzel said subconsciously. The dwarf simply shrugged this shoulder off from my surprise. Well, can you blame them? You finished a whole unit's equipment in what? For days. Staring blankly in the ring of spatial storage, I mumbled to myself. How did they manage to fit everything? I thought it was full the first time. Sigh, there can only be a few more words in that ring. Anyway, I will take my leave, Garak. Putting the ring on, he turned around towards the door. Sure, take your time with this patch, Garak said while walking towards the smithy on the down floor. Asterisk tick. Ugh. Finally somewhere quite. Closing the hidden door, Danzel fell the moment he saw this bed in front of him. Damn it. They even gave me half more than they were before. I-S-N-T that abuse. Danzel said annoyed. Sigh. Maybe I will be able to finish all those if I work the whole damn week. Bringing the bag from the handicaster's shop closer to me, I put all the stuff that I got on the table. At least now I wouldn't be lost in time. Put the sun timer to a place that was easy to see. I guess it's time. Status. Status. Name. Rue Danzel. Level. 20. Class. A undead guardian LV. 20. Subclass. Runesmith of Undeath LV.1. Health. 5500 slash 5500. Mana. 814814. Attribute points. Zero. Attributes. Strength 140 agility, 100 intelligence, 74 endurance, 99. Talents. Superior undead, sin of wrath. Reinforced soul. Superior Unique Concionis, Rune Vision, Dead Rune Knowledge. Skills. Intermediate Weapon Master, LV.1, Undeath Corruption, LV.1, Dash LV1, Shield Bash, LV.4, Gale Mana Blade, LV.3, Sense Danger, LV.3, Curse of Exhaustion, LV.1, Piercing, LV.1, Mana Arms, LV.1. Remark? A undead of superior strength. One of the strongest natural draugr that there is. Though her tier undead far surpasses this strength. For your current tier of strength, you can be considered a powerhouse. Storage. 97, 225 XP. Though I wanted to get my guardian class skills first, with all those weapons with me that would bring more profit. Raising my hand, I tapped towards a window. Runesmith of Undeath LV.1, 3000 XP. Though somewhat expensive for the first tier, it is still fine. Tapping to the upgrade button, windows started to pop up in front of me. Runesmith of Undeath level has increased from LV1 to LV2. Runesmith of Undeath level has increased dash. Runesmith of Undeath level has increased from LV9 to LV10. Intelligence increase by 18 and agility increase by 18. You gained 9 attribute points. You reached the maximum level of Runesmith of Undeath class. To advance into a higher tier, class a mission has been assigned. Mission. Carve 50 runes of the quality of good in any item. Mission completed. Huh. Already done. I opened my new status and I saw it was indeed true. Status. Name. Level. 20. Class. A Undead Guardian LV. 20. Subclass. Runesmith of Undeath LV.10. Health. 5500 slash 5500. Mana. 1012-1012. Attribute points. 9. Attributes. Strength 140 agility 118 intelligence. 92 Endurance, 99. Talents. Superior Undead, Sin of Wrath. Reinforced Soul, Superior Unique Concionis. Rune Vision, Dead Rune Knowledge. Skills. Intermediate Weapon Master, LV.1 Undeath Corruption, LV.1 
Dash LV1, Shield Bash LV.4, Gale Mana Blade LV.3, Sense Danger LV.3, Curse of Exhaustion LV.1, Piercing LV.1, Mana Arms LV.1. Remark, a undead of superior strength. One of the strongest natural draugr that there is. Though her tier undead far surpasses this strength. For your current tier of strength, you can be considered a powerhouse. Storage, 59,425 XP. So my subclass only gives me intelligence and agility as stats. Not bad. I nodded satisfied by my attribute increase. But what got me most interested was the next window in front of me. Please choose your path as a runesmith of undeath. Please choose your path as a runesmith of undeath. Choose one out of three talents to permanently gain. Undead Carver. Runes of Arcane. Krune Modschik Circle. Reading the windows in front of me, I was surprised and confused at the same time. The reason why was because the class advancement didn't t look like the one that I became a undead guardian. There I had the option to choose a class better than the one before better. But this window looked similar to. It resembles the race evolution's options. Danzel said subconsciously. Having the chance to pick up talent was only shown to be possible by the race evolution when I reached the maximum level. The windows were the same, just with other options to choose from. Heck, Danzel thought they were somewhat lacking too. But when he tapped at the first option, all these complaints vanished into tin air. Undead Carver, a runesmith who yearns to master the ancient runes of the immortal beings otherwise known as undead. The runes of an undead Carver go towards the path of learning the necromantic ways of undead runes. Though there have some handy options for those who are mortal, the undead runes show their tremendous strength in hands of an undead himself. Increased your chance to draw an undead rune from dead rune knowledge by 25% and enchants the rune effect by 10%. Runes of Arcane There is no end in the ways of magic, no matter which school of magic it is. And though that unending spring of knowledge that ace the runes of Arcane a runesmith who yearned to combine the way of magic and runes is the result of runes of arcane. Such runes are capable to hold multiple effects and have more mana efficiency than any other runes. Increase your chance to draw arcane runes by 25% and enchant the effect of the rune by 10%. Rune Circle Magic, most commonly known as Circle Magic. Compared to other arts of magic, circle magic requires you to draw your spells with your mind in a magic circle form. Though the spell takes longer to create and the effect being in a fixed state, thus making it the safest magic. The power output of it is one of the best among the magic arts they are. Being able to learn rune circle magic. Looking at all the options, Danzel had to take a moment to process the whole information he was given. The effects are much better than expected. They were so good that I wanted to get all three of them. Undead Carver and Runes of Arkans both offer something similar, yet at the same time not. If you go beyond and remove all the flavor text, then both of those talents purely gave a 25% chance to find the given art of rune with better efficiency at that too. Though I haven't seen any of those types of runes, I could guess that they were powerful. Arcane runes could probably make a sword that is capable to shoot flames into reality, while the undead runes would have similar effects to what the goblin shaman had used to raise the dead. Just placed in the sword. Though both options of raising your slain enemies and shoot fireballs left and right did sound very much appealing. There was another talent to think about. The rune circle magic, though didn't he give me any flat values such as improving your runes, the knowledge that it was offering was tempting enough to consider it. If I were to pick this, I will probably be able to wield magic, but circle magic? Danzel thought in conflict to himself. That talent was the ticket of learning some actually spells, but the type of magic was the problematic part. Right, the old owner's book should have more detailed information in that kind of magic. Without picking a talent yet, Danzel stood up and picked the book lying on the table. Opening the book, he found what he was searching for. Circle magic, 
a slow casting magic that requires your mental power to manifest. Taking this time to read the few pages about circle magic, he closed the book and put it down to the table again. Sigh, it s no good. Sighting disappointed, he crossed the rune circle magic, talent away from the list, and only focusing on the two other talents. Reading the book, knowledge for every caster, did indeed had the information that I wanted, if not even more than though. The book did greatly highlighted the strength of such magic so much that I thought that the old owner who wrote this was himself a magic caster using circle magic. Strengths such as greater control, more accuracy, and overall firepower of the spell were written upon. But the biggest part that made me cross it out of the list was the cast time. As someone who fights in the melee, a type of magic such as circle magic where you had to stay at a place and concentrate at the same time would cripple my battle style. What I needed was some quick cast magic such as Gale Mana Blade where I could use while moving. The type of magic by itself seemed more of a passive one going towards the subschools of rituals and summoning. I shouldn't he strive off the right path. The moment I picked the runesmith of undeath as a subclass I knew that it was going towards more being more of a crafter and I should focus on that. Making up my mind, I clicked to what I believed was the most suitable talent. That should be it. You acquired the talent, Undead Carver. Your talent dead rune knowledge has been upgraded. Oh, where did that upgrade suddenly come from? Let us see what s new dot. Status. Name. Rue Danzel. Level. 20. Class. A undead guardian LV. 20. Subclass. Runesmith of undeath LV.10. Health. 5500 slash 5500. Mana. Satu no satu dua satu no satu dua. Attribute points nine. Attributes strength one forty agility one eighteen intelligence ninety two endurance ninety nine. Talents superior undead sin of wrath, reinforced soul superior unique consciousness rune vision dead rune knowledge undead carver. Skills. Intermediate Weapon Master LV.1 Undeath Corruption LV.1 Dash LV1 Shield Bash LV.4 Gale Mana Blade LV.3 Sense Danger LV.3 Curse of Exhaustion LV.1 Piercing LV.1 Mana Arms LV.1 Remark A Undead Carver of Superior Strength One of the strongest natural draugr that there is though her tier undead far surpasses this strength. For your current tier of strength, you can be considered a powerhouse. Storage, 59,425 XP. I see. The levels of the subclass didn't T go down, but stayed at 10. I wonder if the next advancement is at level 20 or 30. Putting all useless speculation out of this mind, Danzel pressed and opened the dead rune knowledge window. Oh, that s what it means by being upgraded. Looking below the common box that he usually bought runes from, there was another one with the name of Uncommon. Ha ha ha. I was right all along. It did indeed unlock by advancing to the next tier of the class. What stopped this frantic laugh, though, was the number shown when he clicked on the Uncommon box. I impossible. Uncommon. Cost 50,000 XP to learn a random rune. Looking at the cost being five times more than the common runes, he felt like someone hitting him at this head with a metal bat or something. You greedy thing. That S daylight robbery that you are doing right here. Danzel punched the floating window only for this fist to pass through. It was already a bottomless pit before. What about now, though? Do you want to dig even deeper than it already is until you reach my damn wallet? If he had veins in this head, they would even explode by now out of the frustration that he was feeling right now. The worst part of it all was the expectation that he was having towards the uncommon box. Damn it. This is a taunt directly at my face, saying to waste the precious XP that I slaved for four whole days. With a whole of 50,000 XP, I could even buy five different common runes instead of a single one. 
Alas, the curiosity eats the cat. Ugh, I plan to use the remaining XP for my mission, but screw it. I can always get that XP later while the curiosity will make me insane. Tapping the uncommon box with my finger, a window with a new rune showed in front of me. 50,000 XP have been used to learn an uncommon random rune. You acquired an undead rune of Eniv. Rune of Eniv, a rune inspired by Drain Touch, the race ability of every lich, consumes the vitality by touch from both wearer and target. The rune is only able to be placed upon a glove or gauntlet type of armor. Am I first undead rune? He jumped out from this bed out of surprise. In a far of the city of the Arcana Kingdom, flames were raging through the night. Stalls that were selling food were now just pure ashes with the streets filled with burned bodies. The place once known as Saranan holding a population of over a thousand people was no more with crumpled buildings and flames engulfing the whole city. Except for one single place. In the far end back of the walls was a whole castle built on a hill. The flames haven T reached these plays. Yet, asterisk boom. In a room with over 30 people carrying swords and staff looked at the direction that the sound came from. Asterisk boom. Splinters of wood flew from a massive wooden door that glowed ever slightly that indicated there was a strong barrier support the durability of the door. Asterisk boom. City Lord. The door wooden T last for long. A soldier yelled in panic towards the person far in the back. Fear was written all over this face. The man had long brown hair that went until a bit lower than his shoulder and a staff in this hand, frowned upon the panicked soldier. I don't need you to tell the obvious. I have already called for reinforcement to come, so shut your trap and do the job that you are paid for. Though the city lord has shown no emotions to this face which made him look calm to others, inside of him he was already sweating bullets. Asterisk boom. The barrier will not hold. He tight his grip on the communications on this hand before putting it back in this pocket. If I panic now in front of my subordinates, they will lose quicker hope that the barrier breaking. I just have to hold out until he comes. Dante stand and watch only. Knights in the front and caster in the back. Show them what you learned in all the years of service. We just need to hold on for a few minutes for reinforcements to come. Hearing the orders that the city lord had to give them, they finally managed to get a hold of themselves and follow the orders. We still got a chance. Everyone one here is one of the elites that I had nurtured myself these whole years. We just need to hold a bit until he comes. With hope in his eyes, he started giving orders to the elite unit. And soon enough the glow in the door vanished. Asterisk bomb. The door was ripped open and a huge wooden ram fly through the front of the room. Asterisk BTTCHCH. None of the people inside paid attention to the huge ram sliding through the floor. They knew that there was something far more dangerous beyond this door. The door that was now open had pure gray smoke, thus making the people even more nervous. They stared at the gray smoke with bloodshot eyes, afraid to miss what was about to come. They knew that their current silence was the calm before the storm, and soon enough sellouts started to show inside the smoke. Magic casters, prepare your spells. The city lord's voice was like thunder hitting every magic caster's ears, and they reflect started to chant and wave their spells. And as soon they started, multiple figures came running towards them outside the gray smoke. Those are... The city lord paled when he saw who this enemy was. For the arcane and arcana, we hold for our kingdom. Fire. Upon his command, spears and missiles of mana with some elemental spells were flown towards their enemy. The figures coming out of smoke had one sword to their arms and the same phoenix helmet. Everyone single one of them had an aura of bloodthirst and to the eyes of the knights, their crimson armor and helmet made them look more of a demon. Fire and praise. Three voices sounded behind the gray smoke, and soon enough flames slide like snakes towards the phoenix helmet people and forming a burning shield around them faster than the incoming spells. Asterisk bomb. Thuad. 
Boom. The spells of the many magic casters soon met their target, with the explosive spell raising smoke at the area. We got them. There is no way they survived that. Many of the magic casters who cast a smile celebrated imminently upon seeing their enemy turn into dust. All except one. You fools. Don, T stop casting. They are still dash. Before the city lord could finish his sentence, a bright red light came out of the smoke. And before the knights knew it, the unharmed phoenix helmet people dashed with a speed far higher than they could follow. Ah! A knight soldier tried to cry out of surprise, and in the next moment, he was cut in half together with this enchanted armor. And this didn't tea happened only to this knight. The phoenix helmet people's swords were like scythes harvesting to where knights were the wheat. Though they had more numbers, their enemies were far faster. Their praised armor that well-known enchanters made in the city were now weighing their movements down. See city lord. What were your orders? Seeing the knights dying so fast made them realize that death was slowly but surely crippling towards them, with no place to escape from it. The city lord instead looked surprised. I supplied those knights with the best I could find, but their armor is nothing that liability. Though the enemy is stronger than them, their swords are the more terrifying. It doesn't tea matter. Cast your spells towards the enemy the city lord commanded. But many of the casters had a conflicted look on themselves upon that command. You order us to shoot our meat shield? Seeing their expression, the city lord Kuden T help but curse at them. If we don T kill them, everyone will die here. Do it. It s an order. With shaking hands, the casters started to bombard their enemies together with their knights. W what is going? City Lord. Why? Traitorous pig. Many knights fell into deep despair upon witnessing their allies, as much as their enemies killing them with no hind of remorse. With the magic caster behind the smoke casting protective spells upon the phoenix helmet warriors, the result was a few seconds of delay before a total inhalation of all magic casters and knights. Few seconds were needed for the city lord to finish the spell. Earth's protector. Heed my call and serve to protect. Earth Guardian. Two, three meter radius of the magic circle appeared in front of the city lord. And emerging from the magic circle with a brown light were two five meter tall earth golems looking down their enemies. Ha ha ha. Behold my tear for magic. Earth Guardian. Unlike the other nobles, I earn my spot to becoming the city lord. Earth Guardians. Go and kill those dash. Without being able to finish, the three magic casters that were hidden in the smoke before slowly appeared with their eyes glowing. Seeing them, the city lord mouth open wide. Three magic casters of mana vision. Flaming rings. In each caster, two rings of flame appeared and were shortly shot towards the earth guardian's limbs. G-H-H-H. The Earth Guardians tried to move their limbs, but the fire rings in their hands not only slowly made their limbs crack, but they kept them in place. With the two giants now bound, every phoenix helmet warrior dashed towards the city lord, full of bloodthirst. Oh no! Earth SPI dash. Unfortunately, those who don T possess mana vision are hugely disadvantages. Gah! Impossible, my Earth Guardians. With three swords pierced in this chest, the city lord caught up lord while reaching this hand towards the slowly crumpling earth guardians. Protect me. With the light in this fading away, the body fell lifeless to the ground. These were the final ones. We now fully conquered the city of Saranan. One of the warriors reported towards the three spellcasters. Good. Tell me now, how are the new weapons' performance? The magic caster pointed with this staff on this sword. Their performance was better than our last patch of weapons. Cutting others felt much easier than before and the shock that I felt was less than usual from the enemy's magic. The phoenix helmet warrior said with a satisfied tone, I see. Though, of a low tier, the new runes are indeed useful. Another magic caster mumbled to himself. 
Great, we will have to tell them to give us more of those. But for now, let us go to the treasury and dash. Asterisk spark. Hearing the small sound of a spark behind them, everyone turned around with the magic caster already casting their spells. With the sparks turning ever stronger, a massive amount of mana appeared out of blue slowly forming a portal. Coming out of the portal was a man wearing robes and with these gauntlets carrying a head in his hands. This, looking at who appeared their mood of before turned blank and a feeling of disbelieving overcame them. ISNT that the head of the general leading the other battlefield. Recognizing who heads were, they all soon confirmed who the man was. It asked the magus of the tower. Quick, cast your spells. Charge. They didn't t even waste a second to start their spells and charge. But without even realizing it, the man put this hands behind this back, and spikes of earth appeared below everyone, impaling them without even realizing it. Too late, huh? Saying that, the map turned around and was about to leave through the portal again, before he realized something. Hmm. What is that? Turning this gaze towards one of the warrior's swords, it flew in front of him. Runes? They donned T seam from the Craftbinder Kid too, Gazing towards the sword out of curiosity, the here suddenly rose in the room and every body of the Phoenix Warriors was engulfed in flames. The flames of all the bodies moved towards one location until it turned into a massive flame resembling a bird. Damn bird, it's finally out. Kaya, have you heard? The kingdom conquered the city of Saren and that was a fortress. The war is going well for our kingdom. A man with a swollen stomach said to another man beside him, Huh? Stop lying on already, since when did you start drinking so early in the morning? Your wife will be fuming if she knew. The skinny man shook this head towards this friend of his. Hey, I ain't lying this time. It s true. I s n t that right, Jeffrey? The man that stood on this wall slowly opened this eyes and looked towards the two idiots who were his friend. He wore a guard uniform. It is indeed true. I heard the news this morning. They gave me a day free, so let us go already get a drink. This time I will pay. He jiggled a gray back that made some metal sounds in front of them. Seriously, Jeffrey is the best. Jeffrey looked at this guy with a frown on his face. So you celebrate when you are hearing about spending my own money. As he was doubting about having chosen the wrong friends to hang out with, a deep cold voice sound behind all three, and a shadow was cast behind him. Can you move? Huh? What do you want, Dash? Looking behind them, all three sucked their breath, not daring to let a breath come out of their mouth. What they saw was a huge man reaching at least two meters high wearing armor made out of pure metal. He had two thick pauldrons on both sides of this shoulder with the left having some small spikes coming out and another one being a bit taller than the other one. His chest plate middle looked like a cross at top of a shield, which, if it were in T for the dark gray color of the armor, the man would even be mistaken as a paladin. With the two tassets that were protecting the sides of his thighs and the helm that had four single small holes, the man itself looked like an impenetrable dark knight. What is such a figure doing in the alleys? Did we somehow offend him? How is he able to carry so much weight without breaking a sweat? The three of them looked at the man with caution with many questions coming to their minds. They stared blankly at the man in front of them as if their spirit had gone away. Why aren't they moving? Danzel was of course annoyed by those guys' reaction. He just came finished the third patch of the ruined weapon after painstakingly working for a whole damn month. Of course, it was painstakingly is just a metaphor meaning. The undead neither tire nor starve. But that doesn't t count for our mental capabilities. Even I get noticeably mentally exhausted from working 24-7 and doing the same thing over and over again. And even though I could finish the second patch of weapons and armor in a whole week, I didn't t. Though Garak received some complaints from the army for the slow delivery, I didn't t care at all. After all, 
I thought my speed of carving runes was quite fast with every rune having the same quality if not a bit better. If we were to consider me as a mortal who has to eat and sleep the speed itself would half at best. Thus, I decided to spend some of my time in other stuff like reading the books and writing a bunch of stuff like what I did wrong in runes, which was the main reason why it took me so long to finish the third patch of weapons which had even more than the second one. I still couldn't T-solve how his guys in the army could fit everything in that small ring. With me finally seeing the sunlight again after a month, I was extremely pissed off from these three guys standing there looking like some dead fish. The nature of me being undead didn't he help too since it aggravated me the more I stood there. Ugh, whatever dot. Walking past them, I simply pushed those guys to the side of the walls and continued walking. Oof. You bastard, what was that for? That s an assault to citizens. You aren't t going to get away. Stop right there. Danzel simply ignored these three guys. Though the three of them were afraid of him, their anger took the better of them. It wasn't he because the man in the armor was rude to them, but rather of the force he used to push them to the wall. Though Danzel didn't he realize it, the force that he used was enough to hurt them. The man with the swollen stomach arm started to show some black-blue parts in the skin, becoming all the more painful each second. As for the skinny man, this arm was a small scar that was made from rubbing this arm through the wall. The guard Jeffrey was lucky enough to stand farther away from those guys, luckily avoiding the man. All three of them felt that he was unreasonable, and after being stunned by what just happened, they realized something. His guy has neither an army armor nor an adventurer's badge, considering that he must be a mercenary. After realizing his fact, all three of them put up a small smile on their faces before accusing him. You had to know that in the Barum Kingdom, the job of a mercenary was between the gray area of the law with one step of crossing illegal areas. For a kingdom who were control freaks on their military strength, the mercenary was frowned upon, thus making the law, in a sense, unfair towards mercenaries. After all, the adventure system that there is in Barum is an association made to control the mercenaries going by the name Adventures. And one of the laws going against the mercenaries was that harming a citizen resulted in a huge fine and possible imprisonment. Looking at his guy armor, he must be an insanely rich mercenary. The anger of their injuries disappeared with greed showing in their eyes. Jeffrey, arrest that guy. Jeffrey's previous frown was replaced with a small smile on this face. Sorry guy, but as one of the city guards I will have you to follow me, Jeffrey said, while putting his hand in the sword of his. Now be good and pay for our drinks. Danzel, who looked at them couldn't he help but ask himself, are they stupid? Even those undead goblins had more brain cells like your guys. Of course, he knew what those guys were trying to do right now. With me pretending to be a mercenary, Garak did inform me of some basic laws that I had to look after. Sigh. Human's greed indeed blind one shelf. I guess I will try Garax present here. Huh. What are you? Looking at the gauntlet, a window appeared in front of me. Heavy dark steel armor. Armor made by a journeyman dwarf blacksmith. With the skills of the dwarf, the armor turned tougher and lighter than it was supposed to be. Made from dark steel, the armor can absorb much more blunt force than pure steel is capable of. The armor itself makes it slightly easier to move mana around. Enchanted with a lower tier enchantment, which increases the resistance towards blunt and piercing damage. Let us see this performance. Without even using any of his ability, he dashed forward towards the three men. You. Jeffrey gelled while drawing his sword. Just as he drew the sword, Danzel was right in front of the blade. Jeffrey paled upon witnessing the speed of that man and cursed internally. Unexpectedly, though, the man didn't T-dodge his blade and instead let himself be pierced by his sword. You idiot-dash. As he was about to celebrate, the unexpected happened. Asterisk T-C-H-H-H. The blade instead of going through the armor and ending his man's life. 
was pushed to the side from the armor itself while creating small sparks. What? Dumbfounded, he was about to take a step back. But he was swiftly grabbed from his mouth and pushed back to the wall. MHHM. Jeffrey. The fatty and the skinny called out. Where did your confidence of before guy? Holding him to the air against the wall, Danzel said towards all three of them. Don't T. Worry. I will let you be my first. As the man was still screaming in his hands, a dark green ethereal glow came from Danzel's gauntlet. And soon the man's eyes were engulfed with fear, and he started to flay all crazily around. MHHM. Mhm. MHM. Both Fatty and the skinny man looked at their good friend scream orly with fear, but slowly the fear turned into dread. The guard's face turned thinner by the second until his face became like one of the mummies. His before healthy skin turned into a necrotic one with no vitality to show. You received 1500 XP, asterisk ba. Letting the mummy go, Danzel turned towards the other two that fell to the ground. And with a vicious grin on his face, he said, You two are next. The previous dark green glow reignited again as he walked towards the two men. The effect is indeed quite good. Danzel said while looking at his gauntlets. Having long left the crime scene he created, he found his new undead rune of Eniv quite to his liking. In less than 10 seconds, he managed to turn a human adult into a complete mummy with pure his touch. This uncommon rune far surpasses the common runes that just enchanted my previous equipment. I wonder how powerful the other level of runes is, Danzel said while tightening his fist. Just the pure imagination of the other levels made him excited. Of course, he will understand the weakness of the rune of Eniv, that it also affected him and not his opponent alone. The description itself mentions that it also affects the wearer. And when considering the disadvantaged against the rewards, the rune itself would be useless. But that only counted if you have any life force inside your body in which every living being should naturally have. But as an undead being who used their dead mana to replace the life force by itself, that negative didn't he affect me at all. That point alone was in my opinion laughable. As the name went, undead runes were best at the hands of an undead himself. That, or in the hands of a masochist. Though I wasn't he sure if anyone would feel the pleasure of having their vitality by itself being sucked off. The world was big enough for at least one weirdo to be into that kind of stuff. I will have to get myself another one of the uncommon ones. Maybe it will give me another hint towards my research. Danzel mumbled to himself while touching the hilt of Varen. Another pleasant surprise in getting the undead rune was the knowledge that was imprinted in my mind. In the previous normal runes, I had to carve the rune with my normal green mana and that didn't he change until I learned the rune of Eniv. Unlike the normal rules, the undead runes not only my normal mana but dead mana too. That information alone made me realize why I was stuck at the Varen rune without any progress so far. Since the Varen rune was in a way also an undead rune I simply had to not only use my normal mana, but the dead mana itself to carve the rune. Of course, that was easier said than done as runes required a precise amount of mana to work correctly. Otherwise, it will fail or into pure quality. The process was as hard as trying to replicate a drawing with 100% accuracy. No matter how it resembles the original piece, there will always be a small difference in the colors. That process alone bought me a lot of frustration, but also hope in the future. Sigh, once I deliver the third patch to Garak I should take a break and figure the Varen rune out. Though he is probably going to complain about my break, I don't want to destroy his armor too before I got the guarantee that Varen gives me. With the preview's armor being severely damaged by those two assassins, Garak gave his armor as a present together with that thing that I ordered before. Though I wouldn't he have called it a present since he had me pay for it, Shaking his head of that greedy dwarf, he made this way towards the Oru firesmith. Arriving in front of the workshop, he grabbed his sun timer from the ring of spatial storage. Yes, 
Somehow there was still a tiny bit of space left and saw that it was 4 a.m. early in the morning. If I remember right, he opens his smithy around 7 a.m. Should I go to the old owner before coming back? Danzel mumbled to himself. I should even check this sun timer before I even left. Going inside now would only piss him more. Grumbling internally, he walked past the smithy and went to wander around until 7 a.m. But right as he passed the door of the smithy, he noticed the door handle to be broken and the door is slightly open. This. Suddenly I felt bad premonition at the sight of the broken door. Garak would never let his door open. With heavy steps, he changed his mind and walked towards the door. It s indeed broken. Pulling Varen off this sheath and walked inside the smithy with his ethereal flame eyes to flare slightly stronger than before. Closing the door, he stared silently around the smithy. The reception's table in front of the shop has been broken down with a variety of poor quality armor leaning on the ground with some right of destroyed. What the hell happened here? Danzel asked himself with his usually cold voice sounding even colder than before. It was as if a whirlwind hit the whole place. Walking towards the reception table, he halted suddenly. Blood. Staring at the bits of blood on the floor, Danzel would frown if he could. He walked pasted the blood towards the stairs, leading to his actual smithy. Asterisk thuid, thuid, thuid. Every step of his was heavier than the one of before. It s locked. Staring at the lock it up door, he raised his feet and kicked the door down. Asterisk bomb. What happened? Who is it? Glancing at the bulgy six men carrying boxes of armor in their arms, Danzel's eyes turned colder than ever before. I see. Danzel said in a tone half laughing and half mocking himself. Guys. This guy is the mercenary on the same list of the dwarf. One of the bulgy said, while looking at a paper in his hand, You mean this bastard over here? He he, now our worries of before are no more. If we capture this guy, the reward that we will get is enough to set us for life. The men put down their chest of armor and weapons and bought their weapons out. Mercenary bastard! If you come with us, quite we promise that you will suffer far less than you are going through. The man holding a mace in his hand said with a devious smile on his face. Ha ha. Danzel though couldn't he help but laugh. What are you laughing at? The man yelled, feeling being mocked by him. Ignoring the man, I guided the mana in my whole body. I indeed hate humans. Danzel whispered to himself before dashing towards the man with, dash, and a vicious grin to this face. This guy, he is a tier two knight. The men paled suddenly before they guided their life force in their respective weapons, farther enchanting them. That s something new. Danzel comment by the look of what he guessed was life force before dashing towards the two men holding a sword. He swung his sword towards the man in the left before being shortly blocked. Ah! You are just speed dash. As he was about to laugh at his attempt of attack, he felt his sword becoming heavier with every moment. Huh. The sword was swept over by the pure physical strength of Danzel and cutting the man's throat, which shortly made blood come out like a spring. Gah. Gia. Falling to his knees, he tried stopping the bleeding by putting pressure on the wound, but his attempt was as useless as other man swinging his sword from behind me. You bastard take this. Danzel, instead of turning around to block that swing, stood still and watched the man approaching with a side look as his skill, sense danger, didn't he activate. Ting. The sword shortly clashed at his armor, but instead of digging into the mercenary's shoulder and crippling him, a strong mana wave pushed the man's sword and making the lose his balance. What dash? Too weak. With a diagonal swing, Danzel slashed at the man through all his chest while taking the arm that was holding the sword off. Ah! With a hoarse scream echoing through the room, the man shortly died. This bastard! Kill him already! The man with the mace ordered the other two with a spear in their hands. But, 
The two men looked at the men with a shaking voice. The one with the mace was annoyed by those two. Move already, you cowards. Otherwise, I will not let you come out alive, be it defeating him or not. A feeling of dread was slowly overcoming their minds with the dilemma that was put in front of them. On one side, they had to fight the mercenary and the other was dying by the man with the mace after everything is done. Biting their lips until bloodshot started to show, one of the men used his mana at his legs and life force at his arms. Ah! The man rushed towards the mercenary with a battle cry, with his spear in this hand. Braver than the other man with the spear whose legs were shaking in fear. Hmm? You use sprint. Recognizing the man's ability, a hint of nostalgia came to Danzel before his grin turning all the more vicious. Sure, I will play along. Using dash, they were three meters apart. Take this. The life force traveled through the man's arms and into his spear. Hmm. Feeling the skill, sense danger, activating, he knew that using armor preserve wouldn't tee be enough to block it. Better than the other, but still lacking, the men thrusting his spear at the mercenary chest with immense speed at least immense towards his standards. Too slow. Sidestepping the man's thrust, he punched at caving his face and cracking his skull. Bah! The man was sent flying two meters back and stayed on the ground unmoving. Heh! The other men screamed out of horror before falling back to the ground. TCH, useless trash. The man with the mace looked at his subordinate on the ground in disgust before moving towards the mercenary with confidence. Don's T think of me like those trash that you just killed. I once was a silver adventure for you to know. The man said while rushing towards Danzel. Though I failed the silver rank test, I hold the same strength, the man thought arrogantly. Leap step. The life force run through his leg and with a crack in the floor, he dashed far faster than the through the use of sprint. Take this. Heavy strike. Being in front of Danzel, the mana surrounded the mace and fell towards his helmet with the intent to crush his face. Ignoring the sense danger, skill from the incoming mace. A bright blue light surrounded his other hand that was not holding Varen. Repost defense. Asterisk Thuid. A sound of clashing metal appeared that resulted from the mace and a dark gray shield with a dark crystal that appeared out of nowhere. How dash? And you lack technique. Not letting the man finish his sentence, Danzel swung Varen at the man's head, decapitating the man. Now, you. With blood splashed in his armor and sword, he pointed at the man in the ground. Tell me where Garak is. In the bustling streets of the capital in Barum, in the area between where the middle class and the wealthy lived, there was a massive church with all kinds of people going in and out. That was the Church of the Sacred Cross, the main religion that was rooted in the whole kingdom of Barum that worshipped the goddess of life. In that very church that the size alone resembled a small citadel, a man wearing armor made out of asherim and steel with a sword in his left, I walked that church. Walking inside the church, the man was shortly greeted by women wearing noon clothing. Oh, Sir Lewis. Welcome back. Seeing that, Lewis stared at them coldly before replying. I am back. Moving past them, he felt multiple glares behind his back. It has gotten worse. Ignoring the glares of the noons and other men having similar equipment as his, he stood in front of a massive door. Going to his knees, he put the sword in front of him. 3th, Tear Paladin, Louis Apollo requests to speak to the brightest light. His firm, yet not too loud voice echoed through the whole room. Many people stared at him with a hind of disgust and disapproval. Ignoring the gazes placed upon him, the door slowly opens by itself, and a sweet yet stern sounded from the other side of the room. You are allowed to come. Picking his sword from the ground, he walked towards the other side of the door. To be more specific, the main hall of the church. The hall contained many rows of seats in which were illuminated by the sunlight that was coming from the glass windows at the top. Walking on the red carpet in the middle path, 
Lewis looked at the figure that was on a stage who was taking a praying poster. Stopping three meters away from the stage, Lewis repeated the same action that he did in front of the door. Lewis Apollo greeting the brightness light. After a short moment of silence, the figure raised from her knees and looked at the kneeling knight. Lewis, I told you that such formalities are not needed in front of me. The figure said with the same tone as before. I apologize towards the brightest light, but any less than that would be disrespectful towards the saintess. Lewis raised his head, looking at the woman at the stage with a face that left no room for disapproval. Sigh. Good thing that you haven't tea changed too. Louis, the woman sighed with a wry smile on her face. She had the appearance of a beautiful woman in her early 20s, with a height of around 1.74 tall. The saintess had wavy golden hair, shoulder-length hair, and a pair of two eyes similar to her hair. Compared to what the name suggests, she wore a long skirt with two tassets at top of the skirt, protecting both sides of her legs. Her top piece was a silver-plated armor with strokes of golden lines which indicated the power of the blessings in the armor. Holding a claymore with her left gauntlet, she shook she looked like the role model of what every paladin strives to be holy and mighty. Looking towards the hidden meaning behind her smile, Lewis hesitated before opening his mouth. Saintess, do she talk by any chance about the behavior of the fellow believers? Lewis asked. So even you have noticed, huh? The saintess said as he put her finger in her limp, making a gesture that she was in her thoughts. Though you mind not know this, Louis, but the current situation of the sacred cross doesn't he seem good, she replied after making up her mind. Of course, that response though raised multiple red flags inside Lewis's head. W what? Has a plague been discovered? Or did the war against the Arcana kingdom gone for the worse? Did on t tell me that this dreaded council started to appearing in Barum? Louis stood up from this knee position, realizing shortly after the disrespect he showed before going back to his knees. Please forgive me for my manners, O oh brightness light. Lewis stared at the ground as he said with a serious voice. No need to apologize for such a small thing, Louis. It was my mistake of being unclear with my words. The saints said with a sweet smile on her face. Walking back to the stage, she looked at the statue of an angel with six wings. The statue was half kneeling with one hand, holding a staff hole, the other holding a book. With a bitter smile on her face, she started talking while looking at the statue. What I mean was more of the political side of the church. Political side? Lewis asked while several question marks were going inside his head. Yes, though I know that you believe is strong among our sacred cross, that doesn't he go for all believers, unfortunately. Currently, there are two factions that are hidden from the sight of normal people. Those two sides are from the true believers and the nobles. True believers such as yourself follow the correct path that the goddess had show us while the other faction wants to bend his path to their will for the pure purpose of profit. Turning around, she looked directly at Lewis' eyes, her eyes glowing with golden light. The faction prioritized the material wealth is being led by the Pope and the nobles, while the faction that prioritizes the goddess path is being led by me. She said while still staring at Lewis silently. Lewis was shocked by what he heard, and a feeling of disbelief, anger, and confusion came all at once inside his mind. H. How could his be? Lewis said with shaking eyes, staring at the shock. The glow in her eyes faded, with a sweet smile appearing on her face. Through our sacred cross might look peaceful to the outside, the internal conflict will soon flare up. When that time comes, I will look like a traitor who needs to be killed. I am possible. Saint Asame is the brightness light of our church. As such a thing. Lewis stood up, his eyes bloodshot staring at the saintess, wishing at what she said would be a lie. But the silence that followed was enough for him to see that she was serious. He fell to both of his knees. Feeling defeated, he stared at the saintess and asked, Saintess, why are you telling me all that? 
Lewis asked. He wasn't too stupid. He knew the value of such information. Though other minds know the conflict and the existences of the two factions, the information that could result from the death of the sacred cross brightness light, the saintess itself was worth enough to throw the citizens into chaos if realized to the public. And such chaos at the times of war might affect the war itself against Barum. He stared at the saintness, looking for an answer. With a sweet smile and a bright face, her reply made him falter. Cause I trust you. Ah. Those few words touched Lewis to the point he fell to both of his knees and using his hands to support himself. He becomes so emotional that his eyelids became watery. Please, tell me how I can help you, Saint Asama. Please. Looking at the shook Lewis, she knew that he earnestly tried to support her. After staring at him in silence, her tone became firm. There have been reports of multiple kidnappings and even murder his early morning. We suspect that those were made by some old adventurers who joined a group of assassins. Their base, according to our information, is in the slums. As the saintess of the Sacred Cross, I command the three th tear Paladin Louis Apollo to investigate that matter and, if necessary, eliminate them if proven guilty. Can you do that? Grabbing his sword tightly, he stands up and faced the saintess. I, 3th, tear Paladin Louis Apollo will follow the command of the brightness light. Turning around, he left through the door where he came from with flames inside his eyes. Staring at the closed door, the saintess had a smile on her face. Silly, it is too late for me. Looking back at the statue, she continued her prayer of before. You will become a great paladin, Louis Apollo Dot. Currently in the slums of Burns, a man with dark gray plate armor walked beside a man who was shaking from fear. H, here it is, Sir Knight. The man pointed at a large building that looked like a warehouse. So this place is where are you keeping Garak, huh? Danzel said while gazing at the building. Yes, I would never lie to you. So please spare M Dash. Thanks for showing me the way. Pulling Varen out from this sheath, he pierced the man's heart without letting him finish his plea. The runes of Varen lighten up with crimson light, slowly sucking the man's blood directly from his heart and repairing the Varen sword of all this previous damage. I guess continuous maintenance is indeed needed. After Varen sucked enough blood to repair itself to this peak state, Danzel walked towards the warehouse. Let us wreck this place, he said with a cold voice. On the second floor of the warehouse, asterisk bomb. What do you mean you haven't found him yet? A man slammed his hand on the table. The man looked at his late thirties at the height of one, 93 meters tall. He wore leather with some fur on this top, which didn't help much in covering his chest. His brown skin together with muscles on his body and the bald head that he had made him look like an enraged monk that was ready to punch someone. And the people around that table felt like that someone will soon be them. Boss, we even searched for every foreigner and the ones that had recently come, but the sudden wave of merchants from Nexvars makes it almost impossible to find the described figure Dash. Before he could finish this report, a sudden wave of air brushed past him, scratching his cheek. Asterisk Fsu. Yay. Realizing what just happened, he fell to his feet, staring at the wall that had a punch carving. You dare to make excuses in front of me? The Black Fist. The bald man said, while his hand that was stretched flowing with life force. Everyone went silent after the man's declaration. All of them pictured what would have happened if that wave of wind hit their face and shivered by the imagination alone. TCH, weaklings drawing back his hand, he took a seat and looked at them with a frown on his face. It has been more than a month since a trusted aide of my, Oliver had died from an unknown person. I recruited Oliver, and I know by fact that he had a creative mind inside that fat mass that he called himself this body. He always delivered us products with no further complexities. I even planned to raise this rank in the association, and I think many of you know that too. 
The man stared at the group around him. As for all the others, they fell silent in response. Since Oliver has joined the association, most of those guys here have been feeling anger and jealousy towards him cause of how good he was in this job. And the poor idea of him being promoted by the dark fist itself infuriated them all the more. After all, in their eyes, a newbie came walking in and somehow managed to lick this way towards the promotion that they always had waited and dreamed of before. And this sudden death did not only relieve most of the members here, but also made them anxious. Though a slave's merchant's death in the middle of the job wasn't tea that uncommon. In fact, they were most more likely to die than to live and profit from the trafficking they did. This death in the capital itself raised many alarms in their heads. And as some of you might know, our association never let someone alive once they had messed with. But what do you guys bring me here? Zero results after more than a month. You think the association is a joke? Asterisk bomb. A loud noise of wood breaking up sounded through the whole building, which made everyone flinched out of fright. They subconsciously looked at the table, the bald man included. What they saw, though, was the table only showing a small crack. Everyone was surprised that the dark fist managed to produce such a loud sound and leaving so little damage to the table. The bald man, surprised by the sound, looked at his fist in confusion. What the hell was that? I didn't he put that much strength in my fist, so why was it so loud? While he was staring at his feast with confusion, the door was flicked open by someone full of cold sweat to his forehead and pathing heavily. Be boss, the man said as he fell to the knees as he was trying to catch his breath. What are you doing here? Don't you see we have a meeting here? Did you come here to die? The bald man said enraged at the one disrupting the meeting. Upon hearing that, the face of the man pale. Be boss, there is an intruded. Someone came and began massacre everyone on the first floor. What? Everyone at the table stood up from disbelief, including the dark fist. Which bastards dare to break into the warehouse? Don't t they know who our baker is? The dark fist said enraged. Remembering the sight down on the floor, the man shivered. Opening his mouth, he replied with a shaken voice. It s a dark night. Outside the warehouse. Now, how should I do this? Danzel said while staring at the lock of the warehouse. Hmm, this seems to be the only possible entrance. He said while scratching the back of his helmet. Though the building had windows, they were more than 15 meters high. And reaching those was simply impossible, even with the leap skill that I had bought in between this week. At max, I probably could jump seven meters up high, and that was considering the leap and dash skill too. Though I had other ways to sneak in through the window, those would be too loud and making the sneaking in part non-existent. The worst that could happen would be if I realized that the guys inside are way stronger than me. If that were to happen, I will be forced to so escape. And based on my current understanding, jumping out of the window wasn't he the best way to make my epic escape. Should I just break in? Danzel said while staring at the lock with great interest. Well, if there is no solution in hand, brute forcing it should be the solution. Danzel said while raising Varen high. If the lock were able to sweat, it will be already drenched in a cold sweat. Swinging Varen down, the lock was cut in two halves. Asterisk think. Let us hope no one heard that. Placing his hands at the door, the door slowly opened as he was pushing. On the other side of the door, inside the warehouse were many cages placed that held way more people than the cages were capable to keep in. It was so bad that the ring of spatial storage that Danzel had would even be a joke. The worst part was the stench that those cages were making. It was a miracle that those humans, elf, dwarfs, and some beast people hadn't he died from infections and other diseases. The light in their eyes had faded and looking aimlessly around, wishing when their death will come. The people that held cloth covering their nose and carrying swords to their waist disrupted some yellow substance to the slaves when suddenly loud metal sound came from the door. 
Hmm. What was that? One man asked towards the one beside him. Both of those two were wearing red robes while carrying a wooden staff in their hands. Asterisk B-R-R-H-H-H. Looking at the door slowly opening, both of the two felt confused. Hey, was there a delivery planned to be today as well? Both of them looked at the door puzzled. Since both these two were supervisors ordered to look after the slaves, they were informed on who would be coming and at what time. Seeing now the door open, though, made them confused. Usually, the door would be slowly pushed with the help of horses. But now the speed of the door opening was a bit faster. With a gap through the wall, a man wearing dark gray plated armor appeared from the small gap. Walking inside the warehouse, Danzel stared silently around the place. Slaves. Seeing the people cramped inside the caged, Danzel remembered the first guy he killed after walking going inside the capital. To think that Garak would be taken in such a place. Danzel mumbled to himself. Though he was an undead who hated the living, he was quite fond of the greedy dwarf. Though it was a bit annoying that I felt hatred towards him, for some reason I wasn't he as much affected by it when I met humans. After all, he was the single one that I could have a conversation with without having the urge of killing him. You. Who are you? After being called, the thoughts that I had were cleared, with my focus now being on the people holding swords and the two that held staffs. Magic casters. Ignoring the man, I guided my mana towards the Varen sword, preparing to release a Gale mana blade. This guy. Intruder. Seeing the suddenly realized mana in my blade, both men holding the staff realized that it was anything that good. What are you waiting for? Go and kill him. One of the men holding a staff commanded, while the other one was already mid-casting his spell. You bastard! You will regret coming in here. The ones with the cloth mask and swords charged at him full of confidence. But that confidence was shortly cut in two. Asterisk scene. An air blade flight through them at speed they couldn't dodge. Gah! One man screamed as his shoulder opened up. The other's eyes darkened. The men rushing towards Danzel came to a halt when they saw one of their friends having almost half body cut in half. The previous confidence that they had built up from having more numbers started soon to fade away and be replaced by fear. H. He must be from the second tier. For him to use such a powerful ability too should make him of a high-end second tier. We can't. Just as the cloth mask people started to have thoughts of retreat, they heard a voice from behind them. Mana had my call and aim at my enemy, magic missile. The man that was casting raised this staff to the air with one hand. Three balls of mana appeared beside him. And soon enough took three balls flew towards Danzel with similar speed as him. Looking at the incoming blue balls, Danzel didn't plan to stay and see what the balls have to offer. By the speed and the fact that he used casting magic to create it should have some punch. Though the balls had a similar speed with him, their path was very clear in Danzel's eyes. The moment the balls flew towards him, he immediately ran to the side towards the cloth-masked people. But unlike his expectations, the three balls of mana suddenly changed their direction towards Danzel. Looking at this phenomenon, Danzel was shocked. Serious. Oming missile. Danzel cursed at his little understanding of magic. Can't dodge them all. Realizing that he no longer could dodge the incoming missiles, he turned around to face the three missiles. Swinging the Varen sword at the first missile, a huge pressure came from the ball. Though the missile was cut in half and the mana in it had dissipated in the air, the power alone pushed Varen away and almost throw him off. This is. Before Danzel could finish his sentence, the two other missiles came shortly after him. Asterisk Pnai. Asterisk Pnai. With no other choice, he had to bring out this shield and block against the next missile. Unfortunately for him, history repeated itself and the second missile pushed his shield away, leaving his back open to welcome the third missile. And the men who saw this broke into jeers. As expected of a second tide mage, the overseer is indeed powerful. 
The overseer, who was bathing in praise of his colleagues, didn't felt must happy from the result. Not only did he block two of those, but received one as well. And he is still alive. The man's frown didn't go unnoticed by the other magic caster. What are you still standing there? Don't you see that he is still alive? Move you a asterisk se and capture him already. By the looks of it, he is done for, but taking it more serious wouldn't hurt. He sneered at the dark plate armored guy who wasn't able to stand up. The cloth masked mask noticed the shaking of the dark knight who a few seconds ago were so scared of. He he, you dare to come in here and create such a fuss? I will kill. Let's remove his armor and beat him up. I bet both him and the armor would fetch some good coins. Hey, since when were you into that kind of stuff? They're way more pretty boys to one of the filth cages anyway. You. Ha ha ha. Unknown to them who were laughing at someone's fetish with their confidence back. The one who was shaking to the ground looked at them with these ethereal green eyes. Idiots. Danzel had to admit that the missile was way more powerful than he had expected, but to bring him to the point where he couldn't stand up was not. Ignoring the fact that as an undead he wasn't able to feel pain, the armor that Garak crafted him wasn't just for show. His shaking body was just an act to let those guys come near enough to massacre them all. Considering the rune that I carved into my helmet too, when my helmet faced down to the ground I was capable to look around 180 degrees around me without needing to move the position of the helmet by itself. Thus, with my acting and the rune, I created the illusion of someone looking at the ground powerless while shaking from pain. In a way, those ignorant fools were literally walking to their deaths. I have to wait until the very end. The faster I kill those guys, the faster I will be able to reach those magic casters. I will never do the same mistake again. Danzel swore while still staring at them nearing me. Though it was around some months ago, the memory of being held by goblins and right after receiving a damn fireball head-on was still vivid in his mind. Biting this time, Danzel patiently waited while pretending to be badly hurt. Ten meters. Five meters. Three meters. Hmm. Hey guys, don't you find it weird that there is no blood or groans of pain from him? One of the cloth men asked with a frown on his face. I guess that s the limit. Seeing that I have been caught, I hesitated no longer. Sin of wrath. Activate. The dead mana inside of my body spiked up and engulfed my armor with dead mana. Newfound strength was slowly creeping inside of my body while the massed bloodlust found its way outside. Feeling the sudden increase of blood lust from this night together with mana they have never seen before the one magic caster who cast magic missiles, curse it out loud. Damn it. I knew he was pretending, this damn rat. Hey, cast with me. Upon hearing this, colleagues, his mind got cleared from the sudden blood loss that came from his night. Right, we both are 2th, tear mages, and he is purely a second knight. With all of us, we still got advanced. Or so he thought. Compared to these two who were 15 meters away from him, the cloth-masked men had it much worse who was just 3 meters away from him. Their faces immediately turned pale, and a deep fear was crippling inside their hearts. Ah, kill him. Kill him now. One of the men screamed out loud, resulting in a chain reaction to all the others. Ah. All of them raised their swords, ready to smash the Dark Knight, while he was still to the ground out of desperation. Hee <laughs> hee. Raising his one feet to the ground, he slashed diagonally to the one coming at him. Gale mana blade. The Varen long sword soon ripped the men in front of his path, with not even sparing the ones who were behind them that were killed by the massive air blade. Without even being able to resist, half of them were cut to half with only a lucky one, escaping the fate of his now colleagues. Hi! Seeing the fate that his colleagues had faced in front of him, he imminently turned around and run away without looking back. Though Danzel could probably kill him if he chased after him, he decided against it. Kill him. After all, 
Why chase a dog when the whole pack is here? Sure led bash. Using one of the skills that I haven to used for a long time, I bashed one of the man's faces and soon started my massacre. Their number was reduced by the second, and it wasn't too long before I killed everyone single of the cloth-masked people, excluding the coward who escaped. Turning my attention to the two magic casters, I cursed to myself. TCH, I guess I was too slow. Seeing the blue mana forming into the form of balls I knew that I was too late. Mana had my call and aim at my enemy, magic missile. Mana had my call and aim at my enemy, magic missile. Looking at the six missiles forming up, I calmed myself down and raised my hand. Keep it in. Sin of wrath. Deactivated. Being now completely in control of my mind, I guided the mana towards my hand and I started to chant my own spell. Let us see how you eat this, you bastard. The magic casters yelled, release their magic missiles towards my location. I know how your little trick works now, and I want to fall for it for a second time. Earth wall. Casting my spell, the wood screeched and the loud sound of wood breaking down echoed through the whole building. And shortly after the sound started a massive earth wall, started to ascend from the wooden floor itself. What? Both of the magic casters yelled while dumpstuck. He was a magic caster too? They asked themselves. With the wall raising higher and higher, I pierced Farron directly to the wall, which results in me being dragged together to the wall higher. The missile soon hit the wall and broke it. With the earth wall now crumpled, I was still on the air gathering my mana into the Varen sword. Take this. What? The two casters had their mouths open wide from their disbelief. Both of them were extremely confident in their spell, magic missile, and the result that it shone at the first time. Though one missile wasn't enough to defeat that dark knight. Surely four would do, is what both of them thought. But the sudden appearance of the dark knight, using magic to summon a damn earth wall into the facility and use it to propel himself to the air was out of their expectations. And the fact that he has done exactly that made them feel dumbstruck. Both of the magic casters had different looks on their faces. The one that hit Danzel had a frown, while the other had an enraged expression on his face. Ah, you damn bastard. Look at the mess you caused. The next one will be aimed at that damn head of your. Both casters raised their staff aim towards the airborne Danzel but the other who was cautiously observing Danzel's eyes widened open. Quick, cancel and dash, as he tried to warn this enraged colleague, a sudden cold battle cry sound in the air. Take this. The Varen sword glowed with dark green light, and the moment he swung it towards the direction of the one caster who threatened him, wind with mixed dark green took the shape of a moon and accelerated at the caster. The man who was about to finish his spell turned pale, and this face showed urgency. He stopped his casting and tried to jump out of the way, only for him to receive a similar fate as the other who met this blade. I impossible. You received 5,000 XP. One gone, one remains, satisfied with the amount XP that this guy gave me. I guided my mana into Varen and preparing to harvest the next XP bag in front of me. Asterisk Bregg. Being over 10 meters high in the air didn't exactly make my fall better, but with my current attribute and the armor absorbing some kinetic force, I managed to fall with one knee standing. Mana Blade. Though the position was awkward, it didn't stop me from releasing the Gale Mana Blade upon that caster. Asterisk Freshk. Like a shark going after his prey, the air blade dug into the floor and heading towards the last magic caster. Magic shield. In an instant, a blue glow came from outside his chest, which formed a though seeing wall made out of mana. As the shield finished its form, the praying air blade crushed in the wall, creating a loud sound from their clash. Soon enough, the wall of mana started fading away together with the air blade. Standing up from my knee, I silently looked at the caster who seemed to prepare his next. Though I had fought with that old magic caster goblin and that arsonist Rafa, 
That guy before me is the first to use some kind of defense magic, since every time I fired a Gale Mana Blade towards someone, it will be a hit or miss, nothing in between. But now that it was blocked, I felt somewhat annoyed by it. Mana had my call and aim at my enemy, Magic Missile. The caster spread his arms and the manifested mana ball soon accelerated towards my location, but to three different angles. Seeing the incoming missiles coming towards my direction, my gaze turned ice cold. You deaf? I already told you that those 1T work again. Danzel scoffed at this pure attempt to play around the spell of Earth Wall. I don't need to use so much mana just for that. Digging through my knowledge, the information of the spell came in front of me. Mana arms, finishing my cast, two arms made of mana appeared beside me. Go! Using a mental command, I guided the hands to fly directly towards the two missiles to my sides. Asterisk boof. Boof. The mana arms crashed at their target missiles, which led them to realize a big shockwave that destroyed the arms and the missile itself. Huh. The mage who saw him made a confused expression before opening his eyes wide when he realized what just happened. I have already figured how your spell works. Stabbing Varen to the floor, I equipped one of the many other swords from inside the Ring of Spatial Storage in my hands and threw that ruined weapon directly at the incoming missile in front of me. Asterisk boof. The missile released the shock wave and dissipated while throwing the ruined weapon towards near a cage. The slaves who were watching the battle in both fear and hope freaked from the sword that stabbed the floor not so much far away from them. With both of the three missiles gone, the magic caster shoulders and hands were shaking abnormally. H. How? How can my missiles be defeated by a spell like mana arms and a throwing sword? The man started to mumble to himself with apparent pride towards his magic missiles. With my current attributes, I was able to hear these mumbles, although barely. As I told you, once you figure the trick, the rest is easy. Those magic missiles of yours work similarly to a wind bomb, right? Once popped the wind is released, with a total of three of those, the spell by itself is pretty dangerous if faced directly with the homing effect on them. But because of that reason alone, they are much easier to predict. Danzel said, while picking the Varen sword back to his hand. W, what do you mean? The caster said, I ascend to it obvious? Those missiles mindlessly targeted me without giving a care if there is something in front of them or not. Though I don't know much about magic, in my opinion, it would have been better to control them manually than letting them go and seek their target by themselves. What you do is nothing more than being lazy, Danzel said, while looking at him unemotionally. Why you? You. Don't you dare talk about my magic like that, you poor excuse of a magic caster. Do you know how many days and nights I spent learning this spell? An embarrassment of magic, such as you has no right to talk about magic. With veins starting to show on his forehead, he raised his staff to the air and started casting with a hoarse voice. A cold aura started to realize out of the caster, and with each second water started to manifest from thin air and slowly gather towards a place and turning to ice. Looking at this damsel hesitated no more, and the mana that he had slowly gather into his whole body showed to the outside. Dash. The first step of Danzel already covered four meters, and the second followed in short. The time he used to tell the caster how bad his spell wasn't he wasted, he knew that once he starts rushing towards the caster, the next spell will follow. With that in mind, he wasted time purely to slowly guide his mana around his body, not only to get unnoticed, but to also have a get-go right at the start. Not only that, but the abuse of using the skill, dash, made him with less than four steps cross the distance that he and the caster have. TCH, it started to burn. Danzel cursed internally of his mana burning inside of him. With the caster's entire focus being on his spell, he didn't he notice the two-meter dark knight in front of him. Turn into spikes and dash before the caster could finish the spell. The long blade pierced his chest. Huh. 
The intense pain in his chest made him lose focus and stare at the blade in his chest. The four small ice spheres that had formed in the air soon turned into water and fell on both of them. Drenched in cold water and with a cold blade in his chest, a sudden feeling of vomiting came at him. Go dash! As he opened his mouth to puke, Danzel grabbed his mouth with his gauntlet. Guh! Though Danzel grabbed his mouth, some of the caster's blood still managed to pass through a small opening on his gauntlet. You know, my sword was got pretty damaged after stabbing it to my earth wall of before, Danzel said while a crimson light slowly appeared in the blade. The caster didn't he understand what this light was nor did he try to understand with him feeling severe nausea, pain, and fear. Since you managed to hit me once I decided to make an exception on you though, Danzel said with a chilling tone. The man didn't he understand what the dark night meant, but seeing the gauntlet glow in a dark green light, his eyes widen up with understanding. His guy, the man from before wasn't he dark mana. It was dead mana. Yo, e negro. Mir. The man tried to ask but failed miserably. With both of the runes activating at the same time, the caster felt intense pain beyond what he could take on. Looking at the man who treated them worse than an animal being in so much pain, the slaves felt thankful towards the Dark Knight, who put this man in such pain. But shortly their engorgement shouts started to fade as they realized by each second that the caster was turning thinner by the second until he became a mummy with black skin. Letting the corpse fall in ground, Danzel turned around and looked towards the slaves behind him. Looking at the dried up, corpse a feeling of fear came upon them. Staring at the dark night that killed all of their abusers, a sense of fear crippled this way to their hearts. It was as if the blinding bright hope that came to his dark place to dimmer and the closer the dark night got, the dark the light became. Though he killed their abusers, the process he used to kill the last magic caster was way too inhumane for everyone to take. S stay away. A woman in the cage screamed towards the approaching dark night. Looking at the woman who screamed at him, he came to halt. So that's where it is. Danzel thought before changing his direction towards the woman at the cage. That action of mine made the woman who screamed at me felt like a scythe was placed at her neck. With a deathly pale face, she tried to move away from the front of the cage in hurry. And no, stay away. Standing in front of the cage, Danzel silently stared at the woman and the other slaves as he was in deep thought. The people in the cages had their breath sucked up, too afraid to gain the Dark Knight's attention. All except the woman of before. W, what are you looking at? If you aren't going to free us to go away. Hey, a man beside her whispered. Someone close her mouth, another said. Everyone in the cage panicked and quickly tried to closer that woman's mouth before he annoyed the knight anymore. Taking a glance towards the dark knight, everyone remained nervous as he was silently staring at them without speaking a word. After some moments of silence, Danzel slowly raised his hand towards the cage. But before he was able to reach it, a loud voice sound behind him. Hey, Danzel, over here. That voice. Retreating his hand, he picked the ruined sword that he threw and turned around. Garak. Storing the sword inside this ring of spatial storage, he walked towards the dwarf inside another cage. Danzel momentarily halted as he saw multiple dwarfs inside the cage where Garak was. So much facial hair, staring at the ten dwarfs with a similar big beard about the same weight, I might have mistaken Garak if I weren't he used to his greedy face. Looking at me, shaking my head, Garak frowned towards me. Hey, you thinking of something rude done to you? He said with a sharp gaze. You probably are mistaken. Danzel said as he cursed internally of being found out. Anyway, how did you end being kidnapped by those guys? Weren't he you supposed to be able to beat a monster of the second tier? Danzel said. Not everyone has such monstrous strength like you. How am I able to win against two of the same tier and their lackeys? I am just a blacksmith. 
The other nine dwarfs who looked at us, bickering at each other, sighted in relief, glad that this dark knight is on their side. Hey, Danzel, can you? Garak pointed at the cage with a slightly awkward expression. Sure. Putting Varen back to this sheath, I grabbed the metal bars with both of my hands. Hmm. What is he dash? Just as the dwarfs began to ask what I was doing, the low screeching from the metal made them all look at the metal bars surprised. They are bending. Everyone inside the cage thought in disbelief. In fact, every other slave who was watching this spectacle looked dumbfounded. How can someone of the second tier have so much strength? Garak thought to himself surprised. He knew that Danzel was strong, but for him to be able to bend metal was unthinkable. With each passing second, the metal bars bent more and more, slowly making a bigger opening in the cage. But as the bars were about to snap, a sharp howling wind could be heard. Huh. As I were to turn my head to see where the sound came from, the skill, sense danger, activated out of the blue. Letting the bent bars go, I quickly turned around while summoning the shield from the ring of spatial storage. The moment I turned around, a strong wind came like a swinging hammer towards the dark crystal shield. This. Before I could make sense of what was happening, being unable to hold my ground from the sudden projectile, Danzel was pushed back and came crushing towards the cage behind him. Asterisk crack. The hell was that? Picking himself from the ground, Danzel cursed internally as he felt the crack behind his skull. Ho. Oh. You sure are a sturdy bastard to survive that. A deep voice said full of mockery. Turning my gaze towards the voice, he saw a bald brown-skinned man walking towards him. Another one. Nonetheless, that guy is far stronger than those two magic casters, Danzel said while getting back to this feat. So, you are that dark knight? You sure got the balls walking in here and kill my subordinates wherever you like. Aren't you afraid of the association? The man said clearly enraged. I am not sure of what derisive association you are coming from, neither I care. Unsheathing Varen, he pointed at the man. Upon hearing my response, the man frowned. Clueless bastard, maybe the name Black Fist will give you a needed reminder of who you are messing with. Black Fist. Danzel mumbled, confused. Garak, who heard my mumbles, replied with a frown on his face. Be careful, Danzel. The man before you is one of the most powerful second tier going by Dark Fist. He was an adventurer who was at the apex of second tier who uses similar abilities to a druid. Garak explained with a low voice. Apex of second tier, huh? Nodding towards Garak in understanding, his focus was placed on the man before him. Still, the name Black Fist is too fancy in my opinion. Why don't you call yourself Bald Fist instead? You. While veins started to show up in his head, a sudden blue aura appeared around his arms and legs. His legs and arms muscled flexed for a second, while his skin got tougher with the blue aura around. I will teach you a lesson that you will never forget. Beast bear form. A blue illusion of bear arms and legs appeared before fading away. After both images faded away, he started to run at him like a charging bull. Each step left cracking parts on the floor. He is fast. Glancing behind me, I ran towards the side. With now having some space around me, I gather my mana towards Varen. HMPF. The black fist scoffed as he was already in range. Feel my fist. The punch soon clashed with Danzel's black crystal shield. Repost defense. Activating the skill, the force behind the man's punch got reduced by a large amount, but not completely. Though it wasn't he enough to push me back, it still made me somewhat falter. I am not done. The man threw punch after a punch. Asterisk thud. Thuad. Thuad. Each punch was shortly blocked through the help of the repost defense skill, but after five seconds the blocks were no more. You thinking of me like sandbag? Even though five seconds didn't t seem like much, they were just enough to gather my mana in the Varen blade. Swinging my sword at the bald fist, an air blade glowing of dark green was released towards the man. 
Asterisk Sheen. The bald fist who already saw this coming jumped back in advance, and the previous blue glow in his hand faded with a green replacing it to his arms and chest. Beast Turtle Form. A small image of a turtle shell appeared on his chest, and when the image faded, a light green shield surrounded him in a sphere form. The airblade that came crashing to the shield got torn apart, leaving only a big crack towards the bald fist shield. Ho, oh, not bad, the dark fist whistle in surprise. He didn't he think that this dark knight that caused such a mess would be able to almost destroy his shield. He is more dangerous than I, though. As the green shield slowly faded away, Danzel dashed towards him and swung Varen at his neck. Looking at that, the bald fist frowned. As the Varen was about to reach the bald fist, it was shortly deflected by the man's front side of his arm while the other free arm attacked Danzel using the palm. Hmm. Blocking the palm with his shield, he jumped few steps back while gazing at the man's arms. Though he used a palm for this attack, it clearly had less power than when he used the blue aura. Seeing that his opponent was staring directly at these arms, he slightly frowned. Let us see how you handle that. The black fist said while the previous green aura faded and a new appeared. Engulfing these legs and palms, a bright brown aura came from his body and showing an image of two eyes and a jaw of a monkey. Another one. Cursing internally, he prepared to welcome him while charging another Gale Mana blade in Varen. But unexpectedly, the bald fist moved with speed far faster than he was before.